Wake up! I shook the driver. Twig rose and belched, and I backed away from rum fumes. Please take me to Harpenden if you can find your way. Twig zigzagged towards a sleepy mare, and I heard a deep voice. Harpenden, marvellous! We're both going to the installation rites. Garb gate and impeccable King's English warned me that the tall priest enjoyed a much higher rank than I in the Church of England. I felt uneasy. He said to me, I am the Reverend Pickering. I shepherd the church on Queensway. Glad to meet you, Reverend, I lied. I am Elder Alfred. Call me Alf. I am shepherd and janitor of New Life Chapel down by the livery stables. He asked, Why choose such a wretched place, Alf? I replied, "'Twas God what chose it, sir. The place with its degraded living shocked me at first. However, many of them that's there yearn to escape but are unable. Myself, I yearn to take Christ to all of them, but my flock takes up all my time. So very many are ready to receive Christ. Very many, Reverend Pickering. Indeed, I prefer quality to quantity, my son. My church's motto is, you cannot take it with you, so leave it with us. That is how I was able to build the church with the highest steeple in St. Albans. The driver, Twig, shouted, Go now, old Betsy! The mare took her contented time. Pickering rejoiced, This will be the grandest day of my life. Uh, listen, my son, I can solve your problem. You are just too ambitious, my brother. Oh, pardon me, but the cab swaying is luring me to nap, Brother Alf. I dozed, too, until a biting stench woke me up. Garbage lay reeking in a narrow lane. Pickering's face grew red holding his breath until he huffed and tapped the driver's shoulder. That mare is sauntering at its own pace, driver. Make her go faster. Twig replied, Can't! Too rocky, Reverend, Pickering retorted. You can and you will. I dare not miss the installation rites. I have waited for this moment all my life. Use your whip, my good fellow. Again the driver replied, Won't! Too rocky! A painful grip on his shoulder made Twig wince. The voice was calm. Whip that horse, lest I report your inebriation to your employer. Crack! Crack! We lurched forward, bouncing like a kangaroo. Crack! Old Betsy raced, eyes ablaze, ears flattened, neighing wildly, and tail flowing behind. As we careened around curves, chickens and children fled from pounding hooves. Crack! Crack! Pickering's broad-brimmed hat flew off. Thud! The carriage halted abruptly, and Pickering's spectacles slipped off. Twig groaned. Old oh, Betsy has thrown a shoe. I will not drive her improperly dressed. She is a lady, she is, and cannot go in public barefoot on one leg. This be all your fault, me highness. It was not, Pickering objected. You were just too inebriated to dodge that stone, driver. Twig predicted loudly where my companion would spend eternity, and Reverend Pinkering crossed himself. He reprimanded the driver. Cease cursing me, lest I reciprocate in the proper language. You have sealed my doom. I shall miss the rights, driver. Uh, no, sir, uh, you won't, for St. Albans is altered as by the blacksmith shop. You tend to old Betsy, when she is decent, fetch me from that pub. I shall be drinking me lunch. Cheerio, reverend. Come back, driver. Oh, the scoundrel. Oh, well, uh, <clears throat> come, Elder Alf. Uh, watch your step, horse plop lying all over, my brother. A scraggy rat scurried across our way to the shop. We ducked under a row of plucked chickens hanging from the door frame to find ourselves standing beside the Reverend John Wesley. We introduced ourselves, and a blacksmith's bass drum voice boomed, Welcome! 
I will help you when Brother John finishes. Cousin Mikey and Tom, wipe the soot off them nail kegs and give the reverends your seats. Uh, Mikey rose and bowed to us. Of course, Brother Brusa. <coughs> Mikey had the typical cough of an underground miner when in a warm room. Surprised outcries began erupting from the little circle. Crash! Hammer hit anvil, and the blacksmith roared, Quiet! Show my guests respect! Pickering whispered to Wesley, Why are you here in this wicked place? Wesley did not whisper. I love to serve the poor and neglected. Pickering nudged me. That pudgy wretch over there cleaned house for my wife before becoming a bar girl, and worse. Uh, Reverend Wesley, they're discussing your remark about serving the needy. Such free discussion allows laymen to impart false doctrine, my brother. I hope so, Wesley replied. Get it out in the open before it festers and erupts in division. The blacksmith bruiser announced, Our worship will now have its planning time. We will take Jesus to our friends' homes. Now, which friends? When? And who will go? Reverend Pickering stood. Um, pardon me, but you have called this worship. But such carrying on would hardly please our good King George. The little group shouted, Long live the king! So Bruiser suggested, uh, You can walk over with me to those shanties near the garbage dump, Mikey. Oh no, I cannot leave here in me tattered shoes and patched trousers, Bruiser. Yes, you can, re replied Bruiser. You can go to folk whose clothes are just as tattered. We will find them amongst those who are drowning in wickedness, as you once were, Mikey. The ex-barwoman grinned widely, revealing missing teeth, and offered, "'Blokes what I used to entertain would be proud for a kindly soul like you to visit them, Mikey.' She recalled several of them and their devilish ways, as Pickering gasped. She was not joking. So the group prayed for those men by name, and for miraculous healing for one of them. Wesley advised, the Holy Spirit powerfully convinces and convicts of sin when folk gather and talk freely in homes, as 1 Corinthians 14 shows. The blacksmith opened a Bible, and Pickering seized it. Aha! A Geneva Bible! This is not authorized, Mr. Bruiser! The blacksmith grabbed it back, and Pickering demanded, I will soon be bishop over St. Albans, so you will do as I say. You will burn that Bible, Mr. Bruiser. I will not, sir, came the reply. You will, my son, came the demand again. The blacksmith stepped nearer to his rival. The priest stood firm, straight-backed, chin up, eyes spitting fire. The two powerful men locked in silence, soon to be bishop and grimy-handed blacksmith. Nothing moved except wisps of smoke rising lazily from coals in the forge. In that silence, the two voices in my soul deafened me, tearing me in two. One hissed, Side with your future bishop, lest you lose your precious position as God's shepherd that you hold so dear. The other voice was like the coo of a dove. Jesus gives you the shepherd's gift, and he will see that you use it, so stop fearing. Suddenly, Pickering sat and gazed off into space. Bruiser had won their stare-down. He lifted his Bible and said, Our king had a royal fit over a footnote. Pharaoh told midwives to toss Hebrew babies into the Nile, but the note says we must obey God above a monarch. We too will obey our king of kings above all, sir. Defiant voices shouted, Amen! Wesley rose. I'm sorry, folks, but I have a meeting in town and need to grab a bite in the pub across the way before I rush off. The group thronged him. Stay longer! Please stay longer! Bruiser's wife insisted. I will send you with sausage and barley bread to eat on your way, Brother John. As he slipped out, Wesley replied, Well, let me tend to my hungry horse first. Bruiser urged. We will examine our souls now and confess last week's sins. 
You reverends do not sin enough to feel the sting of guilt that we do. We need this weekly confession and assurance. I will confess first. After the confessions, Bruiser held up bread and said firmly, Take, eat, this is my... Stop! Pickering leaped to his feet. I cannot receive holy sacrament from layman's hands, Mr. Bruiser. Why not? asked Bruiser. Wesley blessed this bread beforehand, sir, so anyone can serve it. He told us to receive communion in the Anglican church, so me and me wife went, but the priest eyed her patched dress and treated us like scum. He passed us by when serving communion, Reverend Pickering. I heard moans, and Bruiser continued. I begged the priest to come serve us communion here. He only corrected my grammar and said he lacked time. Going out, I overheard the priest mutter to the altar boy, Uncouth rogue! The lad jeered. Ha! <laughs> Someone pulled him down out of a tree, lopped off his tail, and taught him to make human noises. Well, me poor wife, she cried her art out all the way home, she did. Pickering commented, We must be charitable, but you must not serve communion, my son. Bruiser replied, But our Savior commands it with infinite authority. Shall we obey your man-made rules instead? Whom are we to obey? You or Jesus? Pickering made no reply, and Bruiser proceeded to serve the Lord's Supper. Wesley came back in, and Bruiser embraced him, saying, I will tell you what Brother Wesley done for me. Before I got born all over again, God's blessed Holy Spirit used this man's kindness to me. I had shut me ears to his words, but his compassion sneaked into me wicked heart by another way. Bruiser caressed an ugly scar on Wesley's cheek. "'Tis I won't done that!' I heard gasps, and the blacksmith repeated it. "'Yes, I did. This dear brother tried to stop me from breaking another drunken brawler's face in a pub.' The deep voice jerked. <laughs> I sent Brother John sprawling with the back of me hand, I did. Yet this bruised saint rose, wiped off the blood, and blessed me in the name of Jesus. God's grace pulsated in his kindness. There he was, forgiving whilst absorbing abuse. He told me, we must talk together. And he called to the cook, another slice of kidney pie. For the first time in, since I was a nipper, I wept. There was a moment's silence. Then Wesley spoke. Let's get back to business. The new flocks you gather will need leaders. Take Mikey along and teach them to obey Jesus' commands, just as the brother from town has taught you and Mikey. Mikey slapped his forehead. Blimey, I ain't no teacher, Brother Wesley. Just tell folk about Jesus, replied Wesley, and gather those that put their trust in him. Keep together folk of the same background so that nobody looks down on the others. Eyes turned towards Reverend Pickering, but he was sleeping. Later I woke Pickering up to say, Wesley has left. The meeting is over. They are hugging and planting holy kisses on each other's cheeks. The former saloon lady waddled towards Pickering with arms outstretched, saying, I'm proud to see you again, me lord. Pickering fled, bumping a plucked chicken, knocking his hat askew. Bruiser pumped the billows and told me, Your horse will be fixed in a jiffy, sir. Outside, Pickering was dusting off his black robe. Such a sooty, sweaty shack. Listen to me. If sinners really cared to know Christ, then they would come to our churches, Elder Alf. I replied, Would they? Mikey's breeches had patches upon patches. He would be shunned if he sat in one of our pews. A church bell rang the hour, and Pickering rejoiced, I can still make it to the installation rites. Those voices began pulling me apart again. First the coo. When folk refuse to attend your church, lost lambs for whom good shepherds search, go take your church to them, to all. Just take the steps of Christ and Paul. The hiss opposed. Sss, 
That meeting was scandalous. Make sinners come to your church. Pickering sighed. That toothless old hag warbled off key trying to sing. Even worse was the young woman holding her brat. She howled so. That confusion was of the devil, Brother Alf. Whoa, brother, I replied. Those words comes near to blaspheming the Holy Spirit what had that young woman totally focused on Jesus. Pickering snorted. Such lack of restraint. One man admitted that he had stolen a mule last week. Yes, I replied, but he promised to return it, and they restored him, sir. Pickering countered. A bit hasty, Alf. Oh, here comes that ruffian. The blacksmith spoke to Pickering. Yes, I am a ruffian, sir, and I must apologize for offending you, sir. Pickering accepted. Very well, my son, but, Bruiser, I think you must use a heavy hand to move your followers to do so much work during the week. Bruiser replied, And now, sir, I do not. It be Jesus what moves them. He said, If you love me, then keep me commandments. You surely have a few blokes in your church what yearn to do more for Jesus, Reverend Pickering. I do, Pickering admitted, and they give me ulcers. I say now, I have heard many confessions, but none like today's. I am hardly drawn to such corrupt folk, Bruiser. Bruiser replied, But Jesus was. Well, your horse is shod. Wait here whilst I fetches your driver. As Bruiser left, I heard the hiss. Sss, to embrace this madness would ruin your social life. Then the coo. Let social life include your Lord. With Jesus you must have accord. You want so much to be accepted. Just go and love the poor rejected. The hiss came again. Befriending the lower class repels the upper class. You would lose your power. The softer voice countered, Your selfish fear of losing power will tear your soul and make life sour. So slay the wicked urge you bear. I give you power beyond compare. The hiss grew louder. Sss! Look at you, torn apart, trying to reconcile the old and the new. Give it up. The coo became louder. You must resist the serpent's bite. Then old and new won't want to fight. That dragon makes both bear their claws and gripe about each other's flaws. Again the hiss. Sss! Why give your prestige away to phony churches? Again the coo. Just slay your lust for praise from men. Let childlike trust replace that yen. Behold Christ's cross the only way to follow him and die each day. Then the jeering, Sss, only a fool chases such fantasy. You would lose position, power, prestige, and pay. Twig came and told Pickering, You must pay for old Betsy's new shoe, for twas you what made her run too fast. Pickering replied, Insolent lip! An argument erupted, but my own warring voices seemed even louder. The hiss, Sss, to spurn the norm is social suicide. The coup. Many have died before compromising God's truth. The hiss. Relax, lie down in green pastures, Sss, besides still waters with the contented brethren. The coup. Whom will you please, God or man? The hiss. Take control of your life. Be a slave to neither God nor man. I cried, Oh, the tension! I cannot bear it. Wesley's way cannot be true. I will not let it. The old way is the only way. The coup. Count down time. Five, four, three, two, one. I cried again, I surrender. My flock will send out harvesters. Yes, Reverend Pickering, this is what I was searching for. Whatever kept me from staying so blind? Uh, Pickering felt my forehead and said, yeah, You must have a fever, Alf, for you are raving. I will drop you off on the way at my barber's shop. He is an excellent bloodletter.
Uh, wait, let me clean off my shoe. I heard a fading voice. Such a stench of holiness! Away! Away!